For some time now, organisations have been publishing GIS applications using Silverlight technology. But Microsoft last released a major version of Silverlight back in 2012, and in 2013 announced that they'd ceased development of Silverlight altogether, although they'll still be releasing patches and fixes, and plan to support Silverlight 5 until late 2021. Silverlight will remain a viable technology for some years, but the gradual demise of it has already begun with Google support for Silverlight in Chrome ending in April 2015. In late 2014, Esri itself announced the planned deprecation of their Silverlight Viewer and API, both of which will become fully retired on the 1st of June 2016. The emerging viewer technology is now HTML5. It's actually been around long enough now that it's the current standard for web development and it's free from the need to deploy a plugin. But it's only really recently that GIS vendors have reached the point where their implementations of HTML5 are rich enough for us to build and manage comprehensive web and mobile GIS applications. Esri recently launched its HTML5 web app builder for ArcGIS, which looks excellent if you're on the ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS platforms and need relatively simple applications. And you should always aim for the simplest solution that meets your needs. So if you can do what you need to do on the ArcGIS platform alone, then it's what we'd recommend. But when more mature, extensive capabilities are required, that's where Geocortex Essentials from Latitude Geographics comes in, and specifically, its viewer for HTML5, which is complementary to the whole ArcGIS platform, whether you're using ArcGIS for Server, ArcGIS Online, or Portal for ArcGIS. The main purpose of Geocortex Essentials is to do the work uh, that is otherwise approached via custom development, and it provides a far greater amount of pre-built functionality than already exists in the ArcGIS platform alone. And the whole approach is one of rapid configuration as opposed to custom development. The HTML5 viewer contains a huge amount of pre-built configurable functionality and it makes deploying applications onto multiple platforms and devices very simple. And also allows you to create mobile applications that dynamically adjust to the hardware platform they're on and can also be intelligently disconnected when there's no online communications available. To illustrate some of the HTML5's functionality, I've pre-created a demo site containing some utility data. You can see that we've got address data, we've got some clean water data, and we've got some wastewater data. We also have some pre-built workflows that will work within this site. The first thing I'm going to do is add an HTML5 viewer to my site. Once I've added the viewer to my site, I'm just going to kick it off so we can see what we get out of the box as functionality. And I do that by clicking on the Launch in Browser. You can see that we get a large map area, we get a scale bar, we get an I want to menu, we get a zoom in, zoom out and bookmarks button, we get a theme layer button, we get a toolbar with a minimum set of tools on it, and we get the ability to show the layers and show the legend. Out of the box functionality is very rich but can also be configured. And what we're going to do next is configure some of the look and feel of this viewer. So one of the first things you might want to do to customise your viewer is to personalise it for your organisation by changing the banner up here. And to do that it's, it's quite simple. We go back to our viewer, uh, we click on the look and feel tab and we change the left image which is the image that appears in the top left hand side of our viewer. So if I select on browse I can then move through and select an image of my choice. So I select my one spatial logo. I then click on apply changes to my viewer. And then I save my site. And then I go back to my viewer and I refresh it. So now that you can see very quickly, I've added a one spatial logo to the top of my viewer and it begins to personalise the viewer. Next, we might want to add a task to the I want to menu that allows us to look at the workflows that have been added to the site.
To do this, we must again go back to our viewer configuration. We click on the I want to menu and we click on add a new menu item. I'm going to give the menu item a piece of text that says perform a task. I'm going to set the description to choose a workflow to run. I'm going to give it a command of activate view and the command parameter is going to be the workflow list view. And if I had an icon for this particular option I could add this at this point. But I'm just going to click OK. This adds in my task but it's at the bottom of my list. I might want to drag the task to the top of the list. So I can just click on it and drag it to the top of the list. I can then click on apply changes and then save site. Once my site is saved I can then go back to my HTML5 viewer and refresh it. I click on the refresh button for my viewer and then under the I want to menu I now have perform a task. So I click on perform a task. I can then select and run the call center query workflow. So I can enter a postcode for this workflow and I can say this is a clean water problem and I can click on next. And I can select the relevant address from the list and click next. The system then generates a report for me which I'll be able to view. So here's a view of the report that's generated by that workflow. One of the things we might want to do next is to configure our toolbar and add some more tools to it. So if I close down my report and if I close the workflow and then what I'll do is I'll go back to my viewer configuration and I'll go to the toolbar button. So over here on the right I have my configured toolbar. What I can do is I can now go and add some new tabs to the toolbar and to these tabs I can then add tools so that we get a more useful toolbar in our viewer. So I'm going to add three tabs now. I'm going to add a tab called navigation. I click OK and my tab gets added. I'm going to add a tab called data and I'm going to add a tab called offline editing. So I've now got my three tabs and before I go any further I will just apply the changes so that my tabs are now saved. So to these tabs I now want to add some tools and basically what I do is I drag the tools from the available tools into my toolbar. So I'm going to drag the navigation tools from the available tools into my navigation toolbar. I drag and I drop them and then I apply the changes. So I've now got the navigation tools in my navigation toolbar. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to the find data tools into my data tab. Sometimes these don't drop very easily so the best thing to do is to drop them as near as you can to where you want them to be and then minimize them and then drag them and drop them into the relevant section. This certainly applies if, if you have scroll bars on the right hand side. So a scroll bar here for example means that sometimes the tools don't drop where they need to drop. And, and finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the offline management, the edit features and the measurement tools into my editing offline editing bar. So I'll drag my offline tools and again I'm just going to drop them as close as I can get them for now. I drag my edit features and I drag my measurement and then I'll move them into my offline editing section. 
There's one. There's two. And there's three. Again, apply my changes. And then finally, our five viewer and refresh it in order to get the new tools available to me. So now under my toolbar, I now have some new tabs. I have tools, I have now have a navigation tab, I have a data tab, and have an offline editing tab with some measurement tools. So I can, for example, add an area measurement. So I might want to calculate the area of this building block here. So you can see that we get the area coming out and we get it on the map there as well. I can clear these options. Now what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about offline editing. Offline editing enables people to add objects when there is no mobile coverage when they're out in the field. And to do this we must first create an offline bundle to use with our device out in the field. To create the offline bundle I need to go back to my viewer configuration and I need to go to my offline button on my viewer and I need to generate an offline bundle. So I click on generate offline bundle. When the bundle is created I again save my site I go back and I refresh my viewer. I can then, from my menu, I can then, from my toolbar, go to my offline editing tab and I can manage my offline data. At this point, I need to tell the system which data I want to take offline and how much data I want to take, off, take offline. So you can t only take offline feature services for editing. So I have two sets of feature services here. I have clean water and wastewater. I'm going to take offline the clean water mains. And I'm going to say cache this layer when we sync. So this will cache, in this case, what's currently in my screen view. So I then go to the sync option. And I sync my data. I click on OK. And you can see that I'm now synchronized. You can also see that I've got a button down here. And this button effectively will change as, as the system goes on and offline. But I'm going to simulate that by clicking on the button manually. So if I set my screen to the biggest view, let's imagine we've gone out into the field and we've gone into an area where we do not have mobile coverage. So I'll click on this button and it says you are now offline. So what you'll see is you'll see that when we generated the offline bundle, we generated the master map data, so the background data, so that's available to us. And our feature service, this water pipe set, is available to us as well. That's all that's available in the offline mode. But what I might want to do now is add in a new water pipe, say it goes from here along the backs of these houses, just for demonstration purposes. So what I do is I create a new feature. I create a clean water mains feature and then I can basically digitize on the screen. And each time I click, I get a new point. And when I've finished, I double click to finish. There's my new water pipe. I can then add in any attributes that are required for this water pipe and then I can save my edit. So I've created a new feature in offline mode. Let's say we now go back to an area where we are back in um, signal 
or we've gone back into the office so we then go back online when we go online you'll see that it says at the bottom of the screen you have unsynced edits on one or more layers please use the sync offline data to sync the data back so you can see in the online mode the new object is not available to us as yet so if we go back to our toolbar and we go to sync we can then sync the offline edits that we made so I hit the sync data and you can now see this the objects we created out in the field is now available for us in the main system so this is a way that you can easily go offline add in features and modify features based on what you see out in the field and bring them back and have them immediately available to everybody else in your organization. Finally, as I mentioned in the introduction to this demonstration, the software is able to automatically detect what sort of device it is on. That's a little bit difficult to show in a demonstration, but what we do have in our viewer is we have the ability to emulate what you might see with the different opera, um, operating systems and different platforms that you might want to display on. So we can preview here desktop. Well, we've already seen the desktop, but just to show you, this is what it looks like in a desktop environment. What I can then do is emulate what we might see on a tablet environment. So if I click on the tablet environment, this is what it might look like. And you can see that we have our toolbar available to us. We have our I want to menu and it all works. And then finally what we have is we have our handheld menu. And this is what you might see in our handheld menu. Now you see what's happened is we've got the tabs across the top as you get on a handheld device. And you have, still have our I want to menu. And we can still zoom in and zoom out and do different things as you would. And if we were using this device we can also use our hands to zoom in and zoom out. So in summary, the main purpose of Geocortex Essentials is to do work that is otherwise approached via custom development and it provides a far greater amount of pre-built functionality than already exists in the ArcGIS platform alone. The whole approach is one of rapid configuration as opposed to custom development. The HTML5 viewer contains a huge amount of pre-built configurable functionality and makes deploying applications onto multiple platforms and devices very simple and it also allows you to create mobile applications that dynamically adjust to the hardware platform they're on and it can also be intelligently disconnected where there's no online communications available. This concludes the demonstration. Thanks for taking the time to listen.